All right, welcome back and joining us once again, very pleased to have the Insurance Commissioner of the State of Louisiana, Mr. Jim Donlin. And Mr. Donlin, good to see you again. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Good to see you, Mr. Bowles. Always a pleasure. All right. I, you know, we've talked quite a bit, but I'm, I'm continuing to hear a lot of people. I just came back from out in the field doing interviews on location, and it's still... It's still a nightmare out there to hear some of the stories about insurance companies. It's not all of them. I don't want to put them all into the, the same pot, but we're still hearing some, some horror stories. Give me your assessment, if you could. Generally, what are you hearing uh, as the commissioner, and would you grade the whole industry? How would you grade them at this point? Well, at this point, and that's not an uncommon question. Got it asked in the aftermath of Laura. Uh, over in the southwest corner of our state uh, a year ago. Uh, and my grade for this event, uh, Ida and, and uh, uh, its related challenges, would be a C minus at this point. Um, at the end of the year last year and in the, la the earlier this year, actually, just, just before uh, Ida made landfall, I would have upgraded the Laura service from a C minus to uh, maybe a C plus at this point, being mindful that uh, they had processed over 300,000 claims and had paid out over $10 billion for Laura, 8.6 billion, Delta, another 800 million, and Zeta, another 600 million uh, on top of what uh, what the, the other two storms had, had cost before. So that's a, overwhelming uh, challenge to, to an industry that for eight years had no major landfalls uh, hit our state. And so they were uh, basing their experience, their need for contract resources, whether it's IT resources or claims adjusting resources based on their overall history. Uh, for the aftermath of Ida, I have now licensed or registered almost 10,000 additional adjusters uh, to come to our state. And this event is projected by all experts uh, to be significantly larger than what happened in the Southwest corner uh, last year. Uh, those I mentioned uh, uh, losses total 10 billion. This is projected by the experts to end up costing insurers between 17 billion as, and as much as $40 billion in insured losses. Having said that, no excuse for not complying with the requirements of the law to timely um, investigate the damage that their policyholder uh, has, has suffered and then to keep up communication with them, delivering on promises uh, to give copies of the adjuster's report, returning phone calls and making payments in a timely fashion to claim a proof of claims that exhibit and demonstrate unequivocally a uh, amount of loss that no one can deny uh, as a minimum is uh, due and owing. A partial payment is allowed and a supplemental claim to claim the rest of that damage uh, value is, is available to uh, consumers. And last thing, Mr. Foles, let me add, if you get a check, for a partial payment, cash it, spend it. Don't fear the fact that you may be giving up the rest of your rights to, to your, your reimbursement for your losses, because that is not the case. Unless you sign to settle potential litigation uh, with a release, you are entitled, this is called first party coverage. You're entitled to as many supplemental claims being paid as are necessary to compensate you for the entirety of your loss, including heretofore un unknown damage of, of uh, the, the um, uh, uh, sheetrock or, or uh, uh, wall coverings in your home that were not obvious at the time of your adjuster's visit and inspection, uh, the development of, full, of, uh, of um, mold behind those walls, uh, in, in in between the external exterior wall and and the uh, the sheetrock on the inside, uh, those things 
when discovered or even new damage not heretofore known by uh, by yourself, by the owner, uh, are entitled to compensation as well and as many supplemental claims as are necessary in order to fully compensate you for your loss. Let me ask you this, because we have about 90 seconds left in the first segment. We'll come back for a second segment. You mentioned the word timely, and that's sort of what I'm hearing from people out there. They're thinking they had a certain amount of time to hear from people, but it seems like they're getting pushed off. What is timely to you, Mr. Donlin? Well, the, the hearing from part, the first part, is in the event of a catastrophe, I have the authority and have always done it in the aftermath of hurricanes because of the uh, stress on the company's resources to reach out and comply with the initial requirement under the law that they contact their policyholder within 30 days of knowledge of the claim that the policyholder has filed. And that can be extended and has been extended uh, to 60 days. I don't think failure to comply with that requ requirement is an issue. I think the initial contact has been complied with. It's the follow-up after that, including making available a copy of that adjuster's initial report. All right, Mr. Donlin, if I could go right into it. I'm glad you explained the 30-day, because a lot of people, uh, their insurance agents were arguing that, no, it's once the adjuster gets to your house. I thought I heard you say earlier, and I think I heard you say today, it's when you make that claim that the clock is ticking, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. 30, actually now 60 days from the time that you get a claim number by filing your claim, they have to make contact with you and initiate the adjustment process. That can mean, and, and again, Martin, I'm hearing that, that that's not where the issue is. The issue is after that initial contact by the insurer with their policyholder, which is the minimum required by law, uh, is to make that contact. After that is where the communication is breaking down and folks are being frustrated by the process. Let me ask you this because it seems to me the insurance companies and everybody I've talked to, including myself, have several claim numbers. If if they let's pick a figure, let's say they they tell Mr. Joe or Miss Jane, we've assessed your damage at fifty thousand, your deductible's ten thousand dollars, therefore we owe you forty, but we're gonna send you ten thousand dollars to start. Why don't they just send Jane or Joe forty thousand dollars because that's what they owe them? Well, and the answer to that is because that's what the law requires of them and what they are trying to do by, by offering you at the outset, and it's called for in their policies, by the way, they are offering you actual cash value payment, not replacement cost value. So that if the roof they're replacing is uh, 15 years old, they depreciate the cost. It's going to cost you $15,000 to replace it but the, the uh, other roof being 15 years old uh, was depreciated in value down to $5,000. They're gonna give you the 5,000 and give you the remainder, the other 10, the last 10, when you have completed the repair. And part of that is number one, it's because it's called for in their policy language. And so it's a contract between the policyholder and the insurance company. And it's pervasive throughout the industry, per, perhaps even unanimously provided for in all policies. Some companies, it's their choice. If they choose to waive that requirement, that is their, their decision. But the contract says that's how the system uh, is designed to work and the, and the policy calls for it to work. So it is allowed. Uh, I know it's frustrating, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the coverage that's available is there for the reason of set, ma making sure that you use the money to repair the proper, property fully and to its insured condition rather than sidetracking the money to some um, uh, interest other than putting your property back together. Let me ask you a two-fold question. So if they're going to hold off on paying you, we're still in hurricane season, so follow me here. So I don't know if it might be the yep. thinking of corporate hey, let's delay these payments because 
we still have 30 days left, or roughly, on hurricane season. So if we have another one, we only have to pay them once and not twice. Can they do that? No, sir. The, the uh, claim and the adjustment is, is made for the full replacement cost, even if they're withholding the deductible and even if they're withholding the depreciate, only paying the depreciated value and not the actual replacement cost value. Uh, if there's a second event, it will be readjusted and the damage that is caused by that second event will create another obligation on the part of that insurer. And keep in mind that we have a statute on the books applicable to all admitted companies, property insurance companies, which is about 90% of our market, that they can only apply one name sum a hurricane deductible per calendar year. So that IDA event will have exhausted almost all or all of the hurricane deductible if we have another event this year. But I do want to add that we have actually to the end of November. So it's like a month and a half still to go in this hurricane season. And Zeta hit us almost uh, at the end of October a year ago. So we're not out of the woods yet. We're most of the hurricane season is behind us, but the threat is still looming. Um, not this week, not next week, but before the season is over, there is the risk of another event, no question. Yeah, and I've been hearing a lot in the field about, they said, well, Martin, if I, if I fix everything and they only pay me partial and another storm hits and it damages it again, then the insurance company sort of winning uh, with the money they were going to pay out. It, it does make sense. There are questions, but I see your point, too. Uh, uh, there are statutes and laws against that, I guess. Yes, there are. There are timely payment requirements. And, uh, and, and I, that complaint I did not hear in the aftermath of Laura and Delta in the Lake Charles area uh, last year. And I've been doing this, as you know, Martin, for uh, 15 years now. And we've been through a lot of uh, hurricane seasons, and we were threatened with two events uh, after Gustav when Ike uh, came mm -hmm. our way, which led us to pass the law to limit it to one per hurricane season. And then last year we saw Laura Delta. Uh, so it certainly is not out of the realm of possibility that we could be subjected to uh, such a second event. But there are limitations on the time limit between uh, adjustment and then. Uh, payment of, of a fully uh, uh, documented claim that uh, entitles uh, uh, folks for, uh, to some payment, All if right, it's let's, depreciated let's... value followed by full amount or not. Uh, Mr. Donlan, let me ask you this. I, the, the agents in our area, we have some great agents, and I, I think you would agree with that. We have, on, our own, on my own personal basis, my agent has come in several times for me to talk to the insurance company about some of the grievances I have, and he's just been out the box, Justin Bourgeois with Alford and Associate. Other agents are doing the same thing for their clients. So it's really not the agents. The agents sort of hand off. It gets in all this uh, bureaucratic process and company policy process, and it gets all jumbled at that point. But I want to make sure that we're not throwing in the good agents with the companies that are just moving real slow. And I think you probably see that a lot, too. Absolutely. People always commingle their agent's name, agency name, and the company and, and its name. Uh, they think they're one and the same, and in truth, they're not. Uh, the agent is, is a representative of the company. Uh, but you, he also represents the policyholder. And, and that is a balance that uh, uh, they have to walk, kind of like I do, between keeping insurers in our state doing business and at the same time protecting consumers in this very expensive, complicated part of their lives and essential part of their lives. So I value greatly my own personal agent who's uh, uh, down the block from our house, a neighbor, and my wife deals with on a year on a year in and year out basis, and whose professional advice uh, we're very dependent dependent upon, even as much as 
I'm involved with insurance. And I tell my agent friends, worry not about the companies that write direct over the internet or, or by um, um, 800 number, because what people are really paying commissions for is the advice and the professional uh, uh, handling of their insurance needs, including their claims when they come up. They are absolutely invaluable. And uh, like you say, uh, a few bad actors, whether it's a few agents or a few companies that agents represent should not uh, deter folks from accessing the professional advice and knowledge that agents represent. Let me ask you, and I'm going to spend the last part of this segment in your time talking about flood insurance. There is, I'm not going to say panic, but it's getting pretty close to panic on how people in our area will afford flood insurance if it quadruples and it's going to cause chaos in this area. And I know you've been having your finger on the pulse. Some of it affects you. Some of it's out of the realm. But explain it to the people because... I want them to hear it straight from the insurance commissioner. Thank you, Martin. And after Betsy hit New Orleans and St. Bernard Parish in the late 60s, the insurance companies said almost universally, no more flood coverage. We're going to exclude that from our property insurance policies. And they did it all over America, not just in Louisiana, so that the federal government created under FEMA a flood program, national flood insurance program, gets confused with private insurance because the private companies administer. They sell the policies, they adjust the policies, they, they, uh, they adjust the claims, they collect the premiums, et cetera, et cetera. But all of the risk, the responsibility, financial responsibility is borne by the federal government. And this risk rating 2.0 is a new way of pricing the coverage for flood insurance policies. And truthfully, it is a threat to tens of thousands of property owners in our state in that it could render, and in fact, I would expect it would, render tens of thousands of properties not worthless overnight because of the extreme increases in the cost of flood insurance as mandated by this change in FEMA in how they're gonna price those policies going forward. We are working with our congr congressional delegation, which is unanimous in opposition to that adoption of risk rating 2.0 as it uh, has been rolled out and presented. And frankly, it's already in effect for new policies as of October 1st. So it is a huge threat in particular to that part of our state below I-10, I-12 to the Gulf of Mexico that are more prone and vulnerable uh, to flooding events as we've seen over the past couple of decades. Uh, I'm very mindful of it. I'm working closely with our congressional delegation to push back on it. It's similar to what happened after the last long-term extension, uh, which was first done by Bigot Waters and then rolled back a couple of months later when the full implications of the cost increases were uh, realized by uh, the public officials in our state. Hopefully, we'll be able to push back on this 2.0 risk rating system, uh, similar to that pushback of Bigot Waters uh, seven years ago. Mr. Donlin, we always appreciate you being with us, and uh, I'll come back in short order maybe next week and uh, give you a few more questions on the sentiments I'm hearing out there. But as always, thank you for your time, and we appreciate you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pulse. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with your viewers, sir. All right, there you have it, Jim Donlin, who's the insurance commissioner for the state of Louisiana. And uh, the, he always uh, has the answer. Some, some of the answers uh, are in the gray area because it is a gray area concern we have. I mean, it, it's, it's fluid, but he's done a, a real good job over the years of being up front and getting you that information. And that's why we rely on him so heavily uh, in times like this. We'll take a short break. We have a lot more here on Bayou Time. Stick around.